Are you stuck at home with no social life and no sign that any of this is going to change anytime soon? Is there a chance we might be able to take all this tragedy and use it as a positive force in our lives? Let's talk about it. For many of us, it seems impossible to imagine anything positive right now. I get that. I'm not telling you to minimize those feelings or not feel that way. It's not my place to say things like that. But I would like to introduce an opportunity that I think not enough people are considering right now. If you're watching my talking head on your screen, then it's because you either want to or you've started to or you're successfully adopting some form of health promoting diet and lifestyle, rich with healthy food, healthy habits, and most important right now, a healthy immune system. But anyone who has ever attempted this transformation knows that even in the best of times, this is the hardest thing a person can do. You have to change your entire life. If you want to reverse chronic illness such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, autoimmune disease, etc., you really do have to change your whole life. You don't just get to do meatless Mondays or some other gimmick in order to trick your brain into thinking that you're giving this an actual shot. Sure, some of us can get away with doing a little bit less than others, but at the end of the day, we all have to ditch our old garbage habits and turn them into health promoting habits or else nothing is actually going to change. And when we make big changes in our lives, we know that we're going to experience, at least to some extent, that feeling of deprivation. I deprive myself of kettle chips and bean burritos and fake vegan meats and cheeses and all day brunches and getting buzzed on alcohol multiple times per week because I expected the outcome would feel even better than all of those things that I was used to doing. It was all going to be worth it. And sure enough, after only about 10 days of forcing myself to maintain these healthy habits and eating the right food, I felt way better. I wasn't feeling deprived anymore. I didn't want to go back to eating those things because they resulted in my feeling worse than what I was now feeling. And it wasn't just in my head. My blood work proved that it was true. But if your version of all in is just a couple of healthy meals each week, then you're never going to get to a place where you don't feel like you're just depriving yourself. You, you want to experience actual health and that's going to be the thing that makes it all worthwhile. It's a lose lose. Otherwise you've got to put in enough to where it feels like it's all worth it. And don't get me wrong. I'm all about running little trials. I'm not talking to the people who are just getting started, who are trying out a couple of recipes, building a plan, seeing if this is something that they want to take on. That's a whole entirely different thing. That's the learning curve side of it. I'm talking about the people that are procrastinating, that know what they need to do, they know how to do it, but they haven't committed to doing it in any kind of way that's going to result in their feeling like it's happening. A lot of people will take advantage of the world's misery and say, it's not the time to be focusing on this cute little diet and lifestyle thing. I'm broke. My job is either gone or up in the air and I'm stuck at home with these damn children. The easy thing to do is to say that everyone's feeling down right now. So I'm going to cash in on this collective excuse to procrastinate because now more than ever, no one really expects me to get going on this health thing. Believe me, my internal audience has silently, loudly, but silently used every excuse to try and convince me just like we all have that I can buy a little bit more time before I have to answer to anyone on this whole health thing. I know a lot of you see me on a video and you think I've got it all figured out, that it's not hard for me anymore, that I haven't experienced exactly what you've experienced, so I don't have to listen to this guy. I get that, but the honest truth is I am not all that special. My brain operates the same way your brain operates. I've struggled to break the same habits that you're struggling with and I have to listen to my mind every day just like you, trying to convince me that I can let loose a little bit during these trying times. I have to go through the same shoulder angel argument that you go through, but yes, it's true. It does get easier over time. The process never changes. There will always be trying times. There will always be moments of depressive emotions that rush over us. There will always be a reason you can cash in on to save face among your peers, to buy yourself a little bit more time before you have to take this thing seriously. I'm not suggesting you have to be 100% perfect, but you are probably going to have to be at least around 80% perfect if you actually want to get to a point where you feel the physical and emotional relief that convinces you that it's all worth it to keep going this way in the future. And then there's social pressure. Social pressure from our friends, our family, our loved ones is the number one reason, hands down, why people fail at adopting a lifelong healthy diet and lifestyle. We know that from our own experience and the research shows it too. Our lives are full of misinformed people that think they've got something super important to tell you that you haven't thought of as to why your little vegetable fixation is all wrong. They think they're helping you, but they're not and it's really hard to ignore them. Likewise, our lives are full of irritated people whose status in the world is threatened by people like 
like us who are trying to go out there and get healthy and do better because it somehow makes them look bad. They want us to keep eating just like them because it ensures that their own terrible habits stay safe. So why might this pandemic be an opportunity? Because you're stuck at home. You don't have to answer to anyone except maybe your immediate family, which I understand comes with its own challenges when you don't have a supportive significant other, etc. But it's a whole lot less than dealing with all of the other people in your life, like the friends and the colleagues and all that, that might be watching you eat and judging you and giving you a hard time about it. All that social pressure. You don't have to deal with any of it. Your excuse to actually do this thing has just dropped in your lap. You can block out all the crappy people that are holding you back. You've cut out like two thirds of the social pressure that you would normally experience out in the world. So set a date, start a 30 day challenge and see what you've got. You don't have to be perfect. You're definitely going to screw up. A lot of people won't even be able to do the 80% that is generally necessary to actually feel something happen. But it might be you. Maybe you can. The only way to find out is if you set some targets and work toward them for long enough to where you feel a physical benefit, like your health actually getting better, an emotional benefit because you've accomplished something hard, and then a functional benefit where you've done this thing long enough to ingrain some techniques that will bring down the cost of maintaining this diet and lifestyle. The better you get at actually shopping for the food and making the food and preparing quick, easy meals, the easier this is going to be to maintain over time. At first, it's gonna feel a little bit hard, but it will get easier with experience. And if you do enough for long enough, you'll start to actually feel like it was worth it. It's all about the process, not the outcome. Don't worry about what the scale says. Every time you screw up, you just get right back on board. You can't feel like if you don't get to this specific finish line that you planned on, that it's not worth it anymore. It's gonna derail you entirely. So just focus on the process, and maybe, just maybe, after enough time, it'll start to feel easier. But for most of us, myself included, it never actually gets easy. It's never a walk in the park. You've always got these things that pop up, these reminders of what it used to be. We don't live in the world that our species was evolved in. This is not our natural environment anymore. Everything is set up to make this harder for you than it should be. And that's unfortunate, but if you want health, you're gonna have to work at it form new habits, and eventually you can get there. And just when you start to feel like you're getting it figured out, all of the bars and the restaurants and the happy hours are gonna open back up, and you're gonna be bombarded from all the people that you've successfully avoided for the past couple months, and it will get a little bit tougher to deal with that social pressure when it comes back. But you're gonna have a leg up. You'll have this experience under your belt, you'll have broken some bad habits, and it will be a better experience going forward for you. Pandemic is tragedy, there's no doubt about it. I'm sure many watching have experienced something very close to home around this entire fiasco but it also may be an opportunity and I'd encourage you not to overlook that other angle and if you'd like to see how I've organized my life during this lockdown you can click right here for my pantry fridge freezer tour it's all there and you can stock up on some of those items and put this whole health thing to the test thanks for watching this video I'll see you on the next one bye